Stories are how we leave our legacy in the world. Some of our oldest surviving material <laughs> as humans is not our physical features, it's not our bones, our flesh, it isn't even necessarily buildings, even the great ones like the Great Pyramids. It's our stories. Stories last through the ages. If you look at all of the major religions, they are centered around stories. And stories are how we leave our legacy and our mark on the world because this flesh and bones, it doesn't stick around for very long. But the stories that we tell, and most importantly, the stories we create for others are what lasts. This is something that I really learned from my dad. My dad was an avid storyteller and it's probably one of the reasons why I developed such a love for stories was listening to all of his stories he told me throughout the years. Dad's been dead for eight years now, but I can still remember his stories. I remember the way they made me feel and I can remember how I think about my life based on some of those stories that he shared with me. In today's video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna share three of my favorite stories from dad with you today. And I'm gonna use these stories to illustrate an important point about how we think about telling our stories, how we think about sharing our stories. So when it comes time for you sharing your stories, whether it's on stage, as I'm sure most of you are interested in who are watching this, but also if you have podcasts, as you're thinking of writing a book, a uh, thing of creating your own TV show, all of this is storytelling and great lessons create great stories. And I think dad did a lot of this <laughs> accidentally. He wasn't thinking these are the storytelling principles when he was telling a story, but he knew them intuitively or he developed a feel for them over time. So grab your cup of cocoa, stick your feet up by the fire and let's hear the first story and what you can learn from it. When dad was young, he had an absolute crippling fear of the dark. And a little bit of this probably comes by being born just before the start of World War II. Some of dad's earliest memories are bombing raids from the Luftwaffe and hiding under the table of his parents, having all of the, the lights off during the blackouts. So dad grew up in darkness and fear and worry. And that darkness and fear and worry all became associated for him and he hated being in the dark. One day he's reading this book and in this book a line stands out to him. Do the thing you fear to do and the death of that fear is certain. Do the thing you fear to do and the death of that fear is certain. Dad didn't realise it at the time but he had just read a famous quote from Mark Twain. I didn't even necessarily know why Mark Twain was famous, but if you go and look motivational quotes up on the internet, they're done by about three people. Uh, Mark Twain, uh, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, and Confucius. That's like all of your quotes ever. <laughs> so dad is looking at this quote and he realizes what he needs to do. He goes to an area of Old Aberdeen, the, the city that he grew up in here in Scotland, and he went to a park called the Woodies. Night had fallen and there was this long row of trees and dad starts walking through the Woodies. He's under the trees, enveloped in blackness. As he's walking, his heart is hammering away, getting faster and faster. And he's gritting his teeth and he's clenching his fists faster and faster and faster. Eventually, he can't take it anymore. He bursts into a run. He's running through the wood. He's running through the blackness, relying on the muscle memory of the path. He can barely see anything, but he knows the direction he's going. He knows how far he's got to go. And then he sees it, the light breaking through the trees, a street lamp. He runs towards that salvation. <laughs> he bursts into the light, oh, like an angel's chorus. And as his heart 
goes back to normal. He realizes on the other side of that fear was nothing. He ran through the woods in the dark and nothing happened. And just like that, the fear was gone. And he turned around and walked back through those woodies. And he was never scared of the dark again. What Dad learned from that lesson was any time that he felt scared in life, any time that he felt uncomfortable, any time he was confronting a challenge, he had to run into it, just like he ran into those woodies. That story illustrates a lesson that Dad learned from such a young age, and it was a philosophy that he carried through his life. And when he told the story to me, that was the same lesson that I understood. That when you're scared of something, you have to lean into it and go forward. How do you think I became a public speaker? <laughs> it's the number one fear, isn't it? How do you overcome the fear and the nerves and the anxiety and the insecurity and the self-doubt? You run into it. And that's the first lesson I learned about storytelling from Dad. You can use a story to illustrate an important lesson about life. And people will remember that lesson better through a story than if you just tell them. If Dad said to me, son, anytime you're scared, you've just got to do it. <laughs> that wouldn't resonate, it wouldn't connect, would it? But when I remember the story and I remember Dad's courage running through those woods and remembering the realization and the triumph on the other side, the overcoming of that fear, that's a story that sticks. And that's what you want your stories to do as well. Use your stories to illustrate important lessons about life and people will remember those lessons so much better than if you just tell them what to do. Instead, show them what to do. Dad's second story comes from later in his life. When he was 18, Dad joined the military, left home, and his first deployment was in Singapore. <laughs> Talk about a culture shock from growing up in a, a little city in Scotland to being put on the other side of the world. For Dad, it was just like going into a fairy tale. It was something completely different, completely new. And he remembered during his training, they were going up one of the rivers rafting. And he said that in this river was just everything. There were there was there was crocodiles, there were there were bugs, there were beasts, and they were trekking down this river. And he said that what I understood in that was just how fine a line there is between humanity and civilization and nature and the wilderness. He said when we wanted to, to go to the toilet, we just jumped into the water, hung onto the raft as it was going along, checked there was no crocodiles, got bite our bums and did our business in the water and would hop back into the raft. And there was no airs and graces, there was no etiquette, there was no social decorum. It was something very primal. And he always remembered that through his life that there's only this thin line between the animal within us and the humans we've developed into. And what that story demonstrates is a fundamental truth about our existence. And that's the second thing you want to learn. And the second thing you want to do when you're telling stories is tell stories that appeal to a common human value and a common human experience. Especially in nowadays world, you'll be speaking to audiences from different backgrounds, different cultures, different values, different life perspectives. And there's a lot of idiosyncrasies and variety within that. But there's also a lot of commonality as well. And your stories can appeal to that commonality. If you can find the common thread that we as all humans, we all want. We all want to feel safe. We all want to feel loved. 
We all want to feel that we are leaving our mark on the world in some way. When you speak to those values, your stories will light people up, even if it's an experience they've never had. I never went rafting in Singapore. I still haven't. And from what dad told me about it with the crocodiles and, and going for a shit in the water, I don't think I want to do it. But I can still understand what he means through that story. It's something that I think about when I'm going hiking, for example, not in the exact same conditions, but I can see that within a couple of hours, I can get away from the city and I can get in at least what feels like the wilderness. And suddenly things feel a lot different. There's a, there's a different tempo and there's different energy and what you start thinking about and feeling and experiencing, it changes. That is a common human experience that we all have when we're put into those types of situations. Use your stories to speak to those common human experiences and you'll resonate with anyone you speak to from anyone in the world because we all have that same core value and core experience at our heart as humans. If you've liked Dad's story so far and you want to find out a little bit more about him and some of his life and some of his stories, he's actually in one of my books. The Last 60 Minutes. This is a, a very special book for me. It was the book where a lot of things really started for me and it's about the life experience where things really started with me. I said at the beginning of the video that Dad's been dead for eight years. We lost him to cancer in 2015. And I was lucky enough to spend the last 60 minutes of his life with him by his bedside. And in that moment and that experience, I realized some key fundamentals about life and the way I wanted to live my life. Going back to that common human experience I was just talking about. I started to live my life following these lessons. And as I started to share these lessons, other people were getting value and help from them as well. So I put them all together in this book, The Last 60 Minutes. Here you can find out a little bit more about who my dad was as a person, my relationship with my dad, that really key experience during the last hour of his life, and how my life changed as a result of that. And this was really what launched my speaking career. It gave me the, the template, the signature story and the, the key lessons that I went on and shared for, for years afterwards. And it's something I, I don't talk about quite so much anymore because I've shifted into a slightly different direction with the public speaking and the speaking coaching, but it's still a core experience to, to who I am and what I do. And I hope that the lessons in this can also help you to find out who you are and what you're going to do in your life. It's all about leaving your mark and leaving your legacy, as we've talked about today with stories. The Last 60 Minutes is available on Amazon. It hit number one in its category, the death and grief category, when it came out in phew, start of 2017. Um, it's been out for a while and it's got a lot of great reviews on Amazon. Ebook, paperback, audiobook, all of the formats, it's there for you. The link to the book is in the description below. So if you want to find out more about Dad, more about his stories and more about how you can change your life story, this is the book for you. Dad's third story comes from his time, again in Singapore, a little bit later in his army career. At this point, he's finished his basic training, he's starting to rise up through the ranks of the officers. And one night there's a big squad party in this huge wooden building. At this time, Singapore is actually pre-industrial and a lot of the capitalism and skyscrapers and big finance buildings that we associate with Singapore nowadays wasn't the case back when dad was serving there. So a lot of the, the buildings were wood, the big wood panels and the straw roofs. That's an important detail for later in the story. It's been several hours of drinking and everyone is getting riled up and there's this one major who can do fire breathing. So everyone is, is clapping and chanting, come on, Major, come on, Major, come on, show us your trick, show us your trick. So the Major staggers into the, the centre of the room. He probably doesn't even need his combustible liquid. He could just set his tongue on fire for all the whiskey that's been consumed. So he comes on in front of me and says, go, 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 so he takes the liquid, sticks it in his mouth, strikes the match, and because he's so intoxicated, 
he gets his measures completely wrong. He's put far too much liquid in his mouth. So when he lights the fire, he goes, instead of just a little sparkler, he has a full firework coming out of his mouth. So it's like this flamethrower hits that straw roof that I was telling you about earlier. And the roof goes on fire. And everyone starts running around and panicking. Go get some water, go get some water. They're terrified. The top brass is going to find out and we're all going to be on toilet cleaning duty in the water. So running around getting this water, they managed to, to put the fire out. And why I remember that story so vividly, the way that dad told his stories was uh, very demonstrative. He would just stand there and say, so we're in Singapore and we're having a party and there was this major. He told the story the way I was telling it there with the, you know, I, I remember he, the way he would talk about the major swaggering into the, the middle of the room and then, and then lighting the, the roof. It was very vivid and immersive. And that's a skill that I remember to this day about telling stories. You don't just tell a story, you show a story. There's got to be some amateur dramatics in it. That's what makes a really gripping story. It brings your audience into the story and you're there with the characters experiencing it in that moment. So never be afraid to show off your amateur dramatics. Get a little bit of Shakespeare coming out of you because that's what really brings a story to life. I have so many more of these stories that I could tell from, from Dad's days. Those I think are, are three great stories to illustrate three examples and three principles of why we tell stories in the first place. Stories are one of the most powerful ways to connect and one of the most powerful ways to communicate meaning, lessons, ideas. Bringing in your storytelling skills more will help turn you from a good speaker into a great speaker. Stories are the way that we leave our legacy. Tell your stories, leave your mark, build your legacy.